What's going on everyone? My name is Eric Moretton and today we are doing something real special today. Today obviously marks 18 years since Dimebag Daryl was taken from us and around this time of the year, uh, December 8th and around August 20th as well, respectfully for his birthday, I like to do something um, just to honor the man's legacy because he's left a huge impact on me. And last year I compared the two Dean from Hells, the 2005 and the 2015, which you can check out on the channel here. So what we have here is something super special. It's probably the coolest rig that's ever been in my studio and obviously I'm saying that as a very privileged person. Um, who has a nice collection of amps as well as you guys have probably seen. Um, this is pretty insane as a Dimebag Daryl fan, as a Pantera fan, and if you're a guitar nerd like myself, um, this is a recreation and a replica of Dimebag's like actual rig that he used. So what I'm going to do today is plug it in and walk you through and show you what everything does here because this is all super cool, super rare rack gear that's like really hard to find at this point in time. So yeah, enough of this intro and let's get right into, you know, showing you guys what this, this is all about. All right, so I know I just said like, let's just cut the talk and let's hear it, but we got to like talk about this stuff and like give you guys a little bit of context about all this gear of how unique and rare it is and how special it is and where it was in Dimebag's like career and his rig throughout the years. So this is the Randall RG100 like in the classic like head shell configuration but it's actually taken out of the head shell and thrown into a rack mount configuration which is super sweet. Um, I'm going to throw some pictures up on the screen as well at this point in time where you can see all the different pieces of gear in Daryl's rack and maybe some of his own personal settings throughout the years in Pantera as well. So famously this piece of gear, the Randall RG that was used at Monsters of Moscow out in Russia, you know, this is like a great amp. It sounds insane. Yeah, these old Randalls, uh, bit of a unique sound, you know, they didn't sound like Dimebag right from day one, so yeah. Uh, next up we have another super rare piece of gear, we have the MXR Flanger Doubler, like that's like, you know, I, it's hard to find these things in general, obviously, and like just how rare these pieces of gear are, um, yeah, it, they're crazy. So essentially it's a flanger and it's a chorus or like a doubler effect in one and you can like toggle them in and out. Over here, I think if the push button is in or out, that'll give you flanger or the chorus doubler effect. And then you can actually toggle it in and out of the chain, which is pretty cool as well. And that's something Grady would do on songs like, you know, like you can even hear it on the intro to Cowboys from Hell on the demo and reel that was like looping in the whole intro and everything. Uh, you can hear it on Hellbound, Slaughtered, things like that. And I wouldn't be surprised if maybe the doubler function or sort of like the chorus was used on maybe some of the cleaner parts as well when Daryl would add a little bit of sauce to that. Um, next up we have the Rocktron gate as well. This is just a standard two channel noise gate. Um, this is actually ran in front of the amp as well. We also have the MXR flanger that goes in the loop of the amp. Uh, this one's going up front. Personally, this rig gets super hot and it gets super noisy because there's just so much gain going on. Uh, it might be hard to see right now, but the gain on channel two, the lead channel here, is maxed out on the Randall. Um, so yeah, we're pushing a lot of gain. And with the other pieces of gear that are coming into it, there's a lot of gain. So personally, if you're running a rig like this with this much gain, running a, a noise gate in front and in the loop of the amp will totally silence your amp, your amp and you won't hear any noise. It'll be really good. So Next up we have this here. This is the Aphex 104 um, guitar uh, oral exciter with the big bottom. So essentially, I've heard this one came into the fold like in the mid 90s around the Far Beyond Driven era and you know, Dime was just wanting to chase a couple different tones. Um, this really feels like an EQ to me from when I was really, really playing it. Um, you know, I'm not too sure what Dimebag was trying to achieve from this or what Grady was trying to achieve from this. I've heard mixed reviews that they would plug it in and like turn it, like turn it on, turn it off depending on where they were. So it seemed like it was a very situational piece of gear. You know, maybe it just depends on the room, but I found like it's just like another EQ and that's the theme of this. You're going to see that there's a lot of like equalization and a lot of EQs that are in the rig, okay? Next up we had the Furman. PQ4. Now the Furman PQ4, you could find that and hear that at least on albums like Vulgar Display of Power and Far Beyond Driven and Reinventing the Steel. Again, this is just another EQ and you're going to hear how that really affects the sound and really brings like this Randall to life, you know. We also have the PQ3 which is also used on the Cowboys from Hell album and the Great Southern Trend Kill albums, essentially with the Randall RG 100 HT down here. This is essentially like the Cowboys and Trend Kill sound sort of in a nutshell from a gear like on paper kind of standpoint, but obviously it's not just meant for that as you'll hear later on in the video. Both of these EQs here, those are going in front of the amp as well, they're pushing it, which is really cool because it seems like a lot of modern players now, it seems like they EQ the sound before they even hit the amp with like an overdrive or something, which is what Daryl was more or less doing, especially with um, the whole wave of that TC integrated pre, you know, that was like famous in the 90s for, you know, the Meshuggah sound and like some of the, the Swedish death metal and all that, and now it's came back in the form of other sorts of overdrive pedals, which is 
kind of what Daryl was going for here, and at least how it sounds. Next up, we have the Korg DT1 Pro rack tuner, um, just a standard rack tuner. Um, not really much to talk about here. And this one here, this is a really cool one. This is a power conditioner, but it's from a brand I've never heard of. It's called Juice Goose. Um, the logo up top there is pretty sweet. There's a goose with like electricity flying out of it. I don't know, it's kind of cool. Uh, honestly, does it condition power better than a Furman or better than, you know, an ART or anything like that or a Monster? No idea, I mean, couldn't tell you. But I mean, if you want to get like all the bells and whistles to be very exact like Daryl had is, you need one of these as well. And it goes without mentioning, you need to have these guys here. These are the classic MXR Blue six band equalizers that Daryl would run in front of the amp as well. So essentially, I'm gonna throw a, a drawing of the rig up on screen and it's been confirmed by Grady as well, his tech. So that looks like pretty well everything at this point. Let me know in the comments below if I've missed anything. Um, one thing I do wanna mention and make clear is that some of those Guitar World magazine, um, you know, those rig pictures and everything, especially the one of Daryl in 2000 with like the Washburn 333, the Stealth and the Culprit, and it has all the warheads. That's fairly inaccurate because it's missing key components like the MXR flanger because that's the year 2000. And if you've watched Pantera at OzFest in 2000, like we're getting nerdy with this. Like they open with Hellbound and this is how you get the Hellbound sound, you know, especially with that intro. And that's not to throw shade at Guitar World because they're a, you know, huge corporation. Sometimes they get things wrong, right? Um, you know, they're doing their best, I'm doing my best as well, but do a lot of reading, read the forums, go in the Facebook groups, and that's where you're gonna find, like, the most accurate thing. And honestly, like, the amount of times that I've messaged Grady, like, personally, and he's been, and he's responded to me, you know, it's been awesome being able to talk gear and everything with, with him and the man himself who honestly built all this stuff to figure out how things were plugged in, and, you know, at the end of the day, it's a matter of, like, just learning and figuring things out on your own. Grady is there to help you. You know, he's not going to help everyone. He doesn't have time for it, especially now with the Pantera tribute shows going on. Um, but yeah, um, I hope all this stuff kind of makes sense on screen. Um, there's a lot of information out there and a lot of it's hard to really condense. So I'm trying my best to condense it as much as I can. You know, and I think we all owe a lot to Grady for honestly answering our questions and for wanting to keep the spirit alive for all of us. Because I mean, we want to keep the spirit alive and, I'm, and a lot of us are very thrilled and honored that Grady would take the time just to talk to us and talk shop and figure out how this whole thing was wired up and rigged up because you know that at the end of the day that's all we want to do is just keep the spear alive for Daryl. So now let's cut the talking let's hear this thing. Here we go. All right so for the purpose of this video you're going to be hearing two different guitars with uh, two different sets of pickup configurations on here. The first one that we're going to be hearing for all the E standard songs and all the E standard chugs we're going to be hearing the 2005 Dean from Hell. This is a USA made one of 150 made to commemorate Daryl's return to Dean Guitars, which then turned into a tribute model for his untimely passing. And this one here, this is a 2000s Washburn D3 slime. This is one of the biohazard inlays. And initially I said it was a 97, and believe it or not, I'm learning more about this guitar every day as well. This one has a Dimebucker in the bridge. This one has a Greywire Bill Lawrence. If you want to hear how those pick up sound in a compare and contrast setting on their own, I got another video linked right up here, which you can go check out after this one. And I'm going to be using the IK Multimedia Cabinet Suite. That's going to be the IR of choice because that's a Randall Jaguar with Dimebag used through his entire career in Pantera. Let's hear how this rig sounds starting with the Dean from Hell. All right, so we're going to start with the amp here on its own. And this is just without the Rocktron. Mm -hmm. You can hear there's a good amount of noise coming through, so. But that's just without the preamps and without the EQs as well, so. This is the Dean from Hell. It gets really bassy really fast. Another cool thing about this amp is that when you take all of the lead controls down, it seems like the channels are actually kind of bridged together. Here's another cool thing with the amp. You can run two channels at the same time. Okay. 
Honestly, I haven't seen an app where that can happen before. Very cool. Now, let's start with the first piece of the puzzle. Let's go right into the equalizer and see what happens. So the only annoying thing about the EQ is that it doesn't have a foot switch control on it, so the only way you can really hear a difference is that you unplug it and plug it back in from the circuit. <laughs> So yeah, right away you really hear that sound, that real signature dime bag sound. It really comes to life with that EQ. As you've just heard, the Randall's pretty, uh, not the most pleasant sounding amp on its own, even with the gain cranked and all the controls cranked. Like, to do all this, you really need to give the grind a little bit of juice. So, next up, let's check out this flanger. <laughs> Too, which kind of inverts the signal as it would imply. <laughs> it kind of sounds like there's a wah pedal on it that's like shelved at like a certain uh, frequency and yeah it's super cool. <laughs>
so now what we're going to do is we have the MXR still hooked up. Now we're going to throw on the Furman PQ3. <laughs> And you can already hear there's a ton of gain coming from that thing. You know, the, the noise gate's having a hard time trying to keep up. I could adjust the settings, but we're just going to keep it as is for now. But, like, just so you all know, if you're running a rig like this and you're having EQ on top of EQ, adding gain to certain frequencies, you're going to need a noise gate, or maybe two. <laughs> You almost kind of get that HM2 kind of sound, which is super killer depending on how much high end and, you know, gain you're throwing in there. So now we have the Furman PQ4 hooked up and now something I do want to make very clear is that if you're using a PQ3 or a PQ4 you got to use the low output and the low inputs you use the low range and that's how Daryl ran his from what I've read and from what I've heard from different people in the forums and everything so take that what you will um, go ahead play with it on your own as well I'm gonna run through these tone controls right here just so you can hear how they sound and just so and just so you can hear how the EQ reacts <laughs>
So that pretty well wraps up the video at this point. I know it's a long one, so if you made it through the end and up to this point, like thanks so much for checking it out. Um, there's a lot to go through here and I could have spent way more time doing it. But I mean, you know, like there's just, you can just go down the rabbit hole and get lost in it for hours on end, which is the whole point of this stuff, especially if you're putting together a rig like this, like the rack back here or any kind of rig, whether it's solid state or tubes, or if you got a modeler, like you can go down the rabbit hole and all this stuff. And it's just fun. And that's the end of, at the end of the day, you're plugging stuff in and out. Uh, figuring out what sounds best where in the signal chain and like what doesn't work well with each other and like that's the whole thing and like you're finding the unique characteristics of each piece of gear here like honestly like the Randall on its own like it needs a lot of work to really get it to where Daryl had it and obviously that's what he did we had this six band equalizer and we had the four band e equalizer you know the parametric PQ4 or we had the three band you know the PQ3 we have all those different equalizers doing a job. Yeah, and even the um, the Apex 104, like even that one's doing like a bit of a job. It's kind of hard to tell like with some of the gear, but I know for sure that PQ3 and the PQ4 definitely have a unique sound to each other inherently. And that's the beauty about this old gear. It all sounds uniquely like individual, like even though like they're both achieving the same thing, they're both hitting similar frequencies. One has a few different features than the other, but they they do sound different from each other just because of how they're designed, which is so cool at the end of the day, which is the thing I love about all this old rack gear and just old and just tubes in general and like guitar stuff in general. It's always a fun rabbit hole to get into. And um, that goes without saying like, you know, trying to find this gear now, like, it's possible, but it might not be financially possible, which is, you know, which is what you're going to see on here now, like current listings of the Randall, current listings of the MXR flanger doubler, current listings of like, you know, the Rocktron, you know, gate silencer, like any noise gate will kind of work, but if you want the specific one, I couldn't even find the Juice Goose, you know, on eBay or Reverb or anything like that, you know, because it's such a rare thing. The Korg is probably about the most affordable piece of gear you can find. The parametric EQs are pretty expensive as well. The um, Apex 104, that's fairly accessible in terms of price for what you're going to pay. Um, anything that's associated with Dimebag is going to be very expensive. Even like these guitars over here, like they're they're hard to find as you're going to see on screen. Like the Washburn D3 prices are pretty insane. The Washburn 333 prices and the culprits and all that. Even the 332s are expensive. Any sort of like Dean Dimebag thing is going to be expensive now because obviously the lawsuit and they're not made anymore. So now, then it just turns into... How bad do you want it? How much do you want to pay for it? Which is, unfortunately, that's the way that the world is working right now. But there are different ways where you can achieve that. You can find some of these pieces of gear for a, de for a decent price. Uh, it's going to be hard to find some of the guitars for a decent price. You might get lucky, you know, in your local area. You might have to find a Dean ML79 and do a little bit of uh, pickup swapping. That's not a hard thing. I show tutorials on how to do that on my channel as well. So, you know, check that out if you're in the market and you want to do something like this. And... Honestly, for recreating the rig, there's many different ways to do it, but if you are a home recording person and you have a rig ready to go to record, 
Honestly, the IK Multimedia uh, plugin is going to get you pretty close. I mean, it, it gets you so close, whereas Grady even signed off on it. You know, that's Dimebag's guitar tech. He signed off on it saying it's pretty awesome. So, I mean, so he signed off of it and he built the rig and he heard Daryl playing all the time for like maybe 20 years. Like, I think that says something, right? So, take that for what you will. Uh, but the, at the end of the day, just kind of have fun with this stuff. And, um, you know, just go make your own rig. Go chase Daryl's tone in whatever way you can because there's no right or real wrong way to do it. I mean, there's so many different ways that we can achieve that sound and honestly just keep the spear alive, which is what we all want to do at the end of the day. So, with all that being said, um, thanks for watching this again. And again, huge shout out to my friend Ryan Day. This video wouldn't happen if it wasn't for him, who owns this wonderful rig of like, you know, just like more or less a childhood dream, more or less. Thank you, know, Grady for answering the messages and, and all the guys in the uh, the Dime Bay groups on Facebook and everything like that, you know, who just are so knowledgeable with all the rig wiring and everything and just who talked to Grady maybe longer than I have and who have seen like all these different documentations of how Daryl's rig was was wired up and everything like that's what it's all about everyone wants to share and keep the memory alive and that's what we're all here to do so if you like this video consider subscribing i have a ton more pantera content like that i've done before and that's already coming out down down the woodworks um if you like the dime bag guitars you know i do all that stuff too and all the covers i'm doing all that as well and if there's something else that you want to see in the and coming up, let me know in the comments below if there's something that you learned through this video, like maybe how a certain piece of gear sounds, or maybe how close and how scary this sounds to Dimebag. Even though it's all of his gear, I'm not Dimebag at all, but when I was first playing this stuff, I couldn't believe how crazy and how close this sounded to Dimebag, you know, using a little bit of modern technology as well. Insane. So, if you liked all that stuff, let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you like what I do, consider subscribing. It really helps me out. Let's me know that I'm doing a good job and that you like the things that I do. And with all that being said, thanks for thanks again for checking out this video and let's keep the spirit of Daryl alive and this is to many more years of remembering his legacy and honoring it.